Okay, people, so I guess this is part two to the uh, Alicia Keys uh, Breakfast Club interview. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I was just listening to this interview over, you know what I'm saying? You know, I got to give you the review on it, and you know what I'm saying? I'm just listening to it, and she got two, her, one kid named Genesis, which that is her youngest kid. And then she have another kid named Egypt. Why would anybody name their children Egypt? That's just like me having brother Israel and naming brother Israel slavery. You know what I'm saying? That's just like somebody naming their children literally slavery. Or that's just like you naming your child bondage. Would you name your child, if you have a son, would you name your child bondage? Or would you name your child slavery? Or would you name your child house in? You know what I'm saying? Would you name your child harlot? You know what I'm saying? This is Alicia Keys. Her child is named literally Egypt. And if you read the book of... um. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 68 the scripture says that uh, the most high God will bring us into Egypt again and see what Egypt literally means so you got to know what Egypt means Egypt just literally means house of bondage the the area where you guys think it where, that's called Egypt is not really called Egypt is actually called Mishraim because that's no that's Ham's son. See, if you know your history, you would know you know what I'm saying what Egypt means. Egypt means house of bondage. You know what I'm saying? The original name of Egypt is really called Mishraim. Mishraim. That's Ham's, that's one of Ham's four sons. You know what I'm saying? Ham had four sons. Mishraim, you know what I'm saying? Cush, you know what I'm saying? Canaan, you know, so forth and so forth. And Egypt is just means house of bondage. And Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 68 says, He shall bring us into Egypt, that's the house of bondage, that's America, again with ships. That's S-H-I-P-S, with cargo slave ships. And there we shall be sold unto our enemies. And who's our enemies? The people that is pulling Alicia Keys strings today. The Romans. We shall be sold unto our enemies as slave men and slave women. That's bond men and bond women. Slave women and slave men. Egypt means house of bondage. And no man or woman shall buy you. Why? Because it takes Christ. So if you are of Christ, and if you follow what Christ did, if you take up your cross, if you follow and keep these commandments, that means you are of Christ. You are redeemed spiritually. But physically, you're still in bondage. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to be out of physical bondage until Christ comes to physically set you free. But there is a sense of being spiritually free because Christ said, He who the Son set free is free indeed. So when you are embodied with the Holy Spirit, you become spiritually free, but you still physically in bondage. And that's why it's funny that Alicia Keys' kids, you know what I'm saying, the youngest is called Genesis because Genesis is the beginning and Egypt is the end. Oh, y'all ain't hear me. Y'all didn't hear me again. Let me go ahead and say that again. Genesis is the beginning it's not only the beginning of the Bible, it's also the beginning of humanity. And Egypt is the end. We are in spiritual Egypt. The Bible says in the book of Revelations that 
and their dead bodies shall lie in the streets that is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Where are we at? Where also our Lord was crucified. Now, how was our Lord crucified? Well, we are made in the image, and we are cru crucified every day. They, the Romans have, you know what I'm saying, made us to worship that false god called Nimrod and had us thinking that we are worshiping our Messiah. But we're not. That's crucifying. You know what I'm saying? Like the Bible said in the book of Job chapter 29. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. He covers the face of our judges. And it also says, if not, then where and who is he? Who is the judges? You black men are the judges of the earth. How have he covered your faces? Because he got you thinking that you're African. Pushing that African theology. So, you know what I'm saying? So it's not a coincidence that, you know what I'm saying, Alicia Keys' kids is called Genesis in Egypt. That's not a coincidence. And it's not a coincidence that Alicia Keys got with Swiss Beats because they were spiritually um, put together by the elites to have these kids, to name these kids. She's a puppet. And now she promoting this album which symbolizing, you know what I'm saying, skydiving and in the air. And at the time where, at the old time, where they are really trying to destroy, you know what I'm saying, the chariots. Oh, Lord. Anyway, I'm going to play this audio. What I want you guys to do. Is make sure you guys hit that like button as you guys come in here. It's very important that as you guys come in here, hit that like button. Turn on your notification bell so that you can be notified every time we drop this breaking news on you. Hit that subscribe button if you're new to this channel. And don't forget, I'm your host, I'm your pastor, Mr. Michael Smith. And if you want to donate and support this ministry, the donation link is in the description box below. And that's the thing. That's the thing. difference between him and I, and I think we actually have balanced each other in a beautiful way with that. It's like you get to express what you deserve, and we all deserve it. It's not something where you're not supposed to have something nice. I think we're taught that we're not supposed to have nice things because it's somehow unholy or not right. Um, Alicia Keys, you're not supposed to have nice things if it's not according to... The Most High God's order. If you got the things that you got doing unrighteous acts, no, you don't deserve to have the things that you got. You can have nice things, but you have to be perfectly in line righteously to receive them. Do you understand when we went into the promised land, the Most High God have given us all of everything. We was put over all the other nations. But then we started practicing unrighteous acts. And for that, the Most High God said in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68, He shall bring us into Egypt again. Egypt being your child named Egypt. He shall bring us into bondage again. The beginning and the end. So it's not a coincidence that Alicia Keys is coming out doing this interview on the Breakfast Club, promoting her album on the Breakfast Club in the month of Nimrod and Ceramicis. You know what I'm saying? In the month and talking about skydiving. It's not a coincidence. The beginning and the end. Why? Genesis which is her child, which is her youngest child, and Egypt. I guess Egypt is her oldest child. You know what I'm saying? And Egypt is the end. We are in spiritual Egypt. This is the end. We are not going to be in bondage again. It's on you to determine what you want to do while you're in Egypt. 
Do you want to be destroyed with all of the rest of of the heathens that is doing as the people that are in this spiritual Egypt? Or do you want to do that of Christ? Right. And I think what happened, where that comes from, I think, is just because people can take that and get confused about it and get very selfish about it as opposed to being given. But one thing that Swiss is, is super given. He never does anything for himself before he makes sure that everybody is straight so that's um, a fact I yeah mean, i made my first Period. big check ever in this business <laughs> listen anybody can give you understand you know what I'm saying? the wicked knows how to give anybody can give but you know what i'm saying where is that giving coming from you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying a wicked person Knows how to give um, gifts the same way a righteous person knows how to give gifts. But where is that coming from? Swiss. Hey. He, didn't, he didn't have to do that to me at all. He's that guy. He's always that guy. So I think that's what happens. You get, might get misconstrued, and then you start only thinking about yourself as opposed to making sure that everybody is good. So as long as that's happening and there's a balance, then there's nothing wrong with having. I heard the first piano that you got. He tried to get you to get rid of it and get something way nice, and you was like, no. The first piano. The first piano she ever received. When I guess when you signed the deal, they gave you a piano. Right. And you didn't get rid of it. He was like, there's way better pianos, more expensive piano. And you was like, nah, B. You know, he wanted everything to be Liberace. Right. So, you know, but the, um, I don't think he knew. He didn't realize. So in our house is my first piano. And that's the piano that I was given by Columbia when I was 16. When she was 16. So in her house is her first piano, which is her piano that was given to her by Columbia when she was 16. We do all know what 16 represents, people. So we do know why that piano is still in our house. That is the charm. C-H-A-R-M. You guys know what I talk about when I speak about charms. You know what I'm saying? A charm can be a, a, a chain, a necklace, an earring, a nose ring, a ring. You know what I'm saying? A charm is what, you know what I'm saying, uh, um, as long as you got that charm, because the rituals attached to that charm, and as long as you got that charm, you are experiencing the energy that you get to become what you are. It's a spiritual thing. With, with, with um, you know what I'm saying, with us being in spiritual Egypt, and Alicia Keys naming her child Egypt, Let's us know that her child are ritual children as well. Let us know what she worship. She worships that African religion, which is ancestors, praying to ancestors, conjuring up demons. You know what I'm saying? That's what she does. But anyway, let me go ahead and press play. And, and so it's like a memory, you know, it's like a piece. It's not a Steinway, it's, a, it's not a this. It is actually oh, a Steinway, like but it's quite small. It's, small, it's so. like, you know, just a baby it's a bread. Baby. It's like a, but it's it's beautiful. Is it still tuned and everything? It's still tuned. I play it all the time. Egypt plays on it. It's been with me. So it's like a special thing for me. And he was like, but we can. She said, Egypt play. She said, Egypt plays on it. <laughs> Egypt. Genesis. Egypt. I mean, you cannot make this up. You get this. We had all these pictures. It was fire. <laughs> they look good. I was like, but this one's like special. You could put it in another room because you guys got plenty of room. We like this one. <laughs> we, we like this one. <laughs> now, when did you come up with the idea to do Unlocked and Originals? What made you... What she said? They said, you ever think about getting another piano? You can put it in the other room. He said, we like this one. Well, of course you like that one. Of course you like that one. That's your charm. Say, this is how it's going to happen. I really wanted to, well, first of all, the originals, the concept of keys definitely was always about the piano, and I really did want it to have that, just that stripped back feel. There's something about, yeah. 
And I and I because I guess I didn't realize back to what you were saying mm-hmm. is like you don't realize that you go away from home kind of. And I think it's natural to look for what you're you want to look for more because you you always lived in that home so you're like i've been here what's outside the home you know and so you start searching and you find and you look and then you kind of realize after you look back that man i left the house and i ain't been back and so i think keys was really like coming back home and so that uh you just really wanted to be about the piano and writing it and 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 making it all about that and as I did that, I loved it, and it was and it was fire. But there was there's also this other side of me, to what you're saying, that I think it's hard to show all of you, for all of us. I mean, for all of us, it's hard to really display that, you know, or have an opportunity to display that. And it felt like doing this unlocked. Oh yeah, what's that other side, Alicia? What's that other side? Peace. Not only was it exciting, because it allowed us to reinterpret. This, these originals, but it allowed it to be a, a, the other side of me that I wouldn't have wanted just a whole album of Unlocked, and I didn't, maybe I would have wanted a whole original, but I love them together because it's full spectrum. And you got a song called uh, Nat King Cole on the project. Yes. He's clearly a musical hero of, of yours. <laughs> Definitely. You know, I think it was just the theme that we started to write. I wrote that with a woman named Natalie Hemby who was super fresh, and, um, and the theme that we wanted to write was about because the theme of keys and the theme of my life right now is really about completely never holding back um and you know why she did this song with nat king cole on it you know why she did that if you know the history of nat king cole if you know the history of that nat king cole was literally you know what I'm saying at the ending of his life nat king cole was literally exposing the truth, speaking the truth. You know what I'm saying? Nat King Cole at the end was literally speaking the truth, people. Was literally speaking the truth. Do your history on Nat King Cole. Do your history. Nat King Cole was literally speaking the truth and speaking about who we are. Who we are and who they are. So it's not a coincidence that she had Nat King Cole on the track. It's not a coincidence that her oldest son is damn Egypt, which is what we're in, bondage. It's not a coincidence that her youngest son is Genesis, the beginning. You know what I'm saying? It's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence that she's doing this interview this time, right now. It's not a coincidence that she's talking about skydiving. It's not a coincidence. It's not. All this is pre-planned. Ever again. And to you, you actually are allowed to be on your bullshit. Who said you have to tune down, tone down? Like, where did that come from? So... That was a part of my life for a long time. I, I reject it. I don't want it no more. And so, um, and so, that song really describes that, like tear down the chandeliers and be like your most majestic. And to me, Nat King Cole represents that. There's like an elegance and a prowess and like a legacy and some really a power that he represents. And that's why that's why we wanted to call it that. Ill though, because a lot of people actually don't even know Nat King Cole. Believe it or not. There's a whole generation of people that don't, you know. See what I'm saying? A lot of people don't. And, and a lot of people, and you're so, so to all you younger generations, you know what I'm saying? You want to know, you know what I'm saying, about research Nat King Cole. He was speaking the truth at the end of his life. During the ending of his life, he was coming out speaking the truth according to scripture about who you are. And that's why they linked. See, they like to tell you, because Alicia Keys is a puppet, and they like to get put the truth out there through these celebrities, and you don't say in riddles, and only the wise will catch it. The unwise won't. The unwise will be just like, oh, it's just entertainment. Oh, I like her music. Well, and that's fresh, though, I think, because, you know, he's, because I think it turns people on to, like, that and what is that? I think you know, like a song or two, because you over the holidays you hear, like, unforgettable. You know what I mean? And you're like, oh, yeah. but it was, with his daughter. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. But, I, but so that that wordplay, it was more about being unforgettable, like Nat King Cole. 
Um, by the way, the Wayne verse on that to me is so ma- masterful. I love how he, I love that verse. But what is, for somebody who doesn't fit into an era musically, what is your inspiration? What do you tap into? Mm, everything. Mm-hmm. Everything. I love to, I love to listen to everything. I love to listen to things that, I love new discoveries. I love listening to new artists. I love, you know, taking it back to like the, the eras of the 30s and the 50s and the 60s and the 70s. All right, so there you have it, people. You all know say, make sure you guys hit that that like button that you guys come in here. It's very important that you guys hit that like button that you guys come in here. Turn on your notification bells if you're new to this channel. Hit that subscribe button. And uh, I'm your host. I'm your pastor, Mr. Michael Smith. And if you want to donate to this ministry, the donation link is in the description box below. Till next time.